Ave Maria, welcome back to No Apologies. I'm Brother Joseph, and today we want to look at the heresy of Sabellianism. Sabellius was a priest of the early 3rd century who taught that the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit were not distinct persons in the Trinity. There was only one God, but this one God simply manifested himself or appeared in different modes or offices. And this was put forth in reaction to the philosophical ideas trying to explain the Trinity at that time period, which often seemed to make things even more, more obscure. There the tendency was to speak of the distinction so sharply, especially of the Father and the Son, that they sometimes appeared to have functions completely separate and apart from one another, as though they were actually referring to different gods. This especially seemed true when they spoke of creation and the preservation of creation. Orthodox teachers commonly guarded against drawing this conclusion from the explanations by referring the unity of the divinity to the unity of origin, but even still a danger of confusion existed among the common faithful. The Sibelius sought to simplify by declaring that God is one, holy and perfectly one, and that Jesus Christ is God, holy and perfectly God. And while appealing at first, it's an idea that posed difficulties. To say that God is one, in their sense, is also to say that the Father is able to suffer and die, and in fact did suffer and die, and that the Father now sits at his own right hand. These people also began to follow the logical conclusion and began baptizing with a new formula, just in the name of Christ, which was a direct contradiction of Matthew 28.19. So when Sabellianism was held up to the creed and to the traditional formulas and prayers which existed at that time, its face was revealed not as the newly found proper articulation of tradition, but as a complete break from tradition. And it was this break which defenders of orthodoxy used to combat it. Now Sabellianism is still alive today in the form of Unitarianism within the Protestant Reformation. And knowledge of this error is helpful in dealing with those who hold that the Bible alone, and not also sacred tradition, is the only transmission of the deposit of faith. We recall that there are things which Jesus did and said which weren't written down, as St. John testifies in his Gospel, chapter 21, verse 25. But there are also many other things which Jesus did, were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. We also recall St. Paul's exhortations in his second letter to the Thessalonians, one in chapter 2, verse 15, where he says, So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. And also in chapter 3, verse 6, where he says, We command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is living in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. This tradition is a light and a safeguard which comes directly from the apostles, and to ignore it in favor of private interpretation or private judgment is to reject the faith which Christ gave to them. Origen wrote in the year 230 A.D. that the teaching of the church has indeed been handed down through an order of succession from the apostles and remains in the church even to the present time. That alone is to be believed as a truth which is in no way at variance with the ecclesiastical and apostolic tradition. But thanks for joining me here on No Apologies. Ave Maria.